Hi, Eleanor student Namina. Hi, all my Norwegian students. Happy 17th of May! I know that I've been a touch neglectful again, uh, so I thought that I would try and make it up to you by making a special 17th of May video. For those of you who don't know, uh, today, the 17th of May, is the Norwegian national holiday. Sotnamai, as the Norwegians call it, is a little bit different than a lot of other uh, national days in that uh, the 4th of July, for example, in the States uh, celebrates the American Independence Day. However, the 17th of May celebrates the Norwegian Constitution Day, the day that the Norwegian Constitution was signed. Um, and it's a really, really big holiday. It's one of the best days of the year to be in Norway. There's huge celebrations happening all over the country. Every single elementary school um, in the whole country, I believe, um, organizes a little uh, parade through whatever town they live in. In Norway, there's a huge children's parade that goes up Karjuhamskapte, uh, which is the, the kind of main uh, street in Oslo that leads up to the palace, and all the kids um, have a parade, and there's marching bands, and everyone goes and, and waves um, at the king and queen who stand on the balcony at the palace. And I've only done it once when I was in like eighth grade or something, um, and I got to join a parade of a friend, I guess. Um, but it's really fun, it's great. Uh, adults celebrate with uh, champagne at breakfast and continue in much the same fashion throughout the rest of the day. Um, it's not a celebration for amateurs, be careful. Now, some of you are probably wondering, what is she wearing? Well, I'll tell you. This, my students, is called a vunant. Now, a vunant is kind of like a party outfit, a festive outfit that you wear at special occasions. It's very, very Norwegian. There are hundreds of different kinds, and each one is specific to a certain place. Um, and so the one I'm wearing is from um, a tiny little place outside of Molde, which is called Vågstroma where uh, my mother's mother's family comes from. So you're kind of meant to get one that, um, that represents your lineage, your heritage. I mean, most people obviously have family uh, from several different places. So you can kind of choose, although um, my understanding is that it's traditional, you know, for girls to go, you know, through your, your mother's mother's mother, whatever lineage, and, you know, men go through the fathers. Um, and so on the uh, 17th of May, you know, most Norwegians, I wouldn't say most Norwegians, but a, a lot, a lot of people have vunads, and anybody that has one wears it on the 17th of May. And so everybody's walking around town in these fun little outfits, everybody's got flags, and it's a wonderful, wonderful day to be a Norwegian. But just because it's a holiday does not mean that we get to slack off on our studies, so I shall now continue teaching you some Norwegian. On a little sidebar, I would just like to say that I see um, on my Facebook that I've gotten a whole lot of Facebook requests that I'm assuming um, is probably from you guys. And I'm really sorry that I have a policy um, that I don't accept Facebook friend requests from people that I don't know. Um, I'm sure that most of you are nice, normal people, but I bet a couple of you are real creepers. Um, so sorry about that, <laughs> but I do have um, a Facebook fan page, and I would love it if you all liked my page. Um, I put a link in the description, so you can click on that and like my page, and I, I really um, will do my best to answer uh, messages and, and questions and things that are posted there. So if you want to get in touch with me, that's definitely the best way to do it. I can see that uh, a lot of people are still a little confused about the whole am, et, I thing with regard to nouns, so I shall try to explain it one last time. So in Norwegian, there are three separate genders which each noun fits into. There is the feminine gender, which takes the article I. There is the masculine gender, which takes the article am, and the neuter gender, which takes the article et. However, uh, the dialect that I speak, um, which is a very predominant dialect in Oslo, uh, we've kind of combined the masculine and feminine to all, to all take an instead of I. So we don't really use the article I. We use an and et. And knowing which one a verb, or I'm sorry, a noun takes is very important. And there's no way of knowing just by looking at a noun. So it's something that you have to memorize when you're memorizing a noun. And I will do my best to always tell you when I'm teaching you a new noun, whether it is an an noun or an et noun. Another kind of nitpicky thing that I want to mention, like I've said before, Norwegians are 
real sticklers for pronunciation and we have two letters which sound very, very similar um, probably to most non-Norwegians, but to Norwegians they sound quite different. Um, they are the letter I, which in Norwegian is E, which you say like you would say the letter E in English, you know, like smiling with your lips, E, E, quite simple. And then the letter Y in Norwegian is E which is a bit different. It's kind of with, with round lips, kind of sticking your lips forward. E. So there's E versus E. 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 And that's something um, to remember when you're reading words or trying to say the alphabet. To ask where someone is from, you say, Hvor kommer du fra? Hvor kommer du fra? Hvor kommer du fra? Literally, where come you from? Where come you from? To answer that, you would say, Jeg kommer fra... Insert where you come from here. Jeg kommer fra New York. Jeg kommer fra Oslo. To ask somebody where they live, you say, Hvor bor du? Hvor bor du? And to reply, you would say, Jeg bor... Now, you can either here say, Jeg bor i, or Jeg bor på. Usually, you would use i, um, if it's a bigger place, like if you're saying a country or a, a big capital city um, or something like that, but generally smaller places, if you're referring to like a neighborhood, you would say på, like jeg bor på Majorstua, which is a neighborhood in Oslo. Um, you use på. Although this rule is actually not 100%, and I've actually asked several Norwegians if they can explain to me a um, consistent rule as to when you use e and when you use på. And I've actually not really got anybody to do that. So I must admit that that rule is a bit iffy, although generally, as a general rule, if you're saying, you know, a country or a, a big place, you will use E, whereas if it's a smaller place, and you use PO. At least that's my deduction. <laughs> and you know what? Because it's a holiday, I think we're going to end it there, keeping it short and sweet today. But you will, of course, still get your bonus word. Although, um, this lesson's bonus word is actually kind of more of a fun fact. So I see that there's been uh, quite a bit of discussion in the comments about the similarities between Norwegian and Swedish and Danish. And I can tell you that all three languages are very similar. Uh, Norwegians and Swedes can understand each other quite easily. It's quite frequent. I mean, there are a lot of Swedes living in Oslo, and generally Norwegians and Swedes will have a conversation where Norwegians speak Norwegian and Swedes speak Swedish, and it's generally quite, quite easy um, to understand, although for people who are learning, I'm sure it's not that easy, but for Norwegians, um, it's quite simple. And when it comes to Danish, written Danish um, is almost exactly the same as Norwegian. It's very, very similar. However, Danes speak, and don't tell them when I said this, but the Danish speak like they've got a hot potato or my dad says like marbles in their mouth. Like, oh, it's kind of hell, like they're speaking like this all the time. Like they swallow all their words. And to us Norwegians, it just sounds really, really strange and can be quite difficult um, to understand. However, I just went off on a side tangent. So, bonus word. Um, in Sweden, if you were to go into a pub, you could ask uh, for a bash, a bash, which in Swedish means beer. However, in Norwegian, the word bash means poop. Yup, poop, like what a baby does in a diaper. Um, so, it's the exact same word, means something very, very different in Swedish and Norwegian. When somebody first told me that, I thought they were joking, um, but it's true. Bash in Swedish means beer, in Norwegian it means poop. Because it is the 17th of May, I shall leave you all with a little song. This is the Norwegian National Anthem, which is of course sung all over the country on the 17th of May.
if you'd like to look at the lyrics and a translation of the lyrics, I shall put a little link to that in the description. So you can look at that. And yeah. Enjoy! Gratulerer med dagen! Happy Sette Namar!